Money, peace, everybody. That's peace in Swahili. Welcome to Satora's Black History Corner internet program at allpointstv.com. I am your host, Catherine Hunter Williams, along with my co host, Miss Catherine Blake. Hello, everybody. Also known as Miss B. Sometimes you'll hear me call her Miss B. Are you ready? That's Miss Blake. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, sister, let's pass it on. Amen. All right, uh, I want to say something a little bit before we get into the program. Never deny young people where you came from or who you are. I say this because some black Americans will tell you they have no roots in Africa. Mm. So today I'm going to tell you our story about Robert Smalls, who made, um, who made our story of being enslaved escaped and became a great politician Amen. and a lot of people don't know about Mr. Smalls and Miss B is going to tell our story about Miriam Daniel Mann Amen. a hidden computer of NASA <laughs> and in case you didn't know what NASA stands for it stands for National Aeronautic or Aeronautics Mm -hmm. and Space Administration. Mm -hmm. NASA is a United States government agency that is responsible for science and technology related to air and space. Amen. The space age started in 1957 with the launch of the, of the Soviet satellite Sputnik. Sputnik. Yep. <laughs> NASA was created in 1958. Okay. I have, it's, it's the story, is your story long or? Mm -mm. Okay, because Robert Smalls, I got a little bit to tell about him because people just don't know who this man is. I still will not do the whole thing about him. You, have, you can go on the internet and just look up Robert Smalls and know what he's done. And the reason I want to tell our story about him is because it's political time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're having this debate tonight, and that's all you see in here on television, mm -hmm. you know. They think it's going to be a big blow up. I don't think it's going to be at this one, but it might go on down the line. It might get very bitter, you know, between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. We're estimating 100 million people may be viewing this, though. Yeah. Oh, that's quite a bit. I never heard of that number for a debate, you know, in this country. So it may be, you know, I don't know. I don't think it's going to get to be nasty politics. Oh, yeah. I hope so. I mean, it's got to, if you're going to tune in, you might as well see something entertaining. Huh? Make it entertaining. You know? Yeah, right. Okay. Or Donald might not show up. You know, he, he sometimes don't He'll show, show up. up. He'll show up. Well, we'll see. He'll show up. I think up. it come on in Flint uh, on ABC at 9 o'clock tonight. Yeah. I'll be trying to watch it if I don't fall asleep. And also, you know, uh, the Saints are playing tonight, and I got my hat on with my Saints emblem. <laughs> on the side, New Orleans. <laughs> All right, let's get into our story. New, Ar about New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> about Robert Smalls. Oh my God! I, no, let me. I don't even want to talk about New Orleans because New Orleans had another flood again, and yeah. they still was being ignored and stuff. So, uh, anyway, <clears throat> Robert Smalls. He was born April fifth, eighteen thirty nine and was an enslaved black American who during and after the American Civil War gained freedom and became a ship's pilot, a sea captain, and a politician. He freed himself, his crew, and their families from enslavement on May 13, 1862 by commandeering a Confederate transport ship, CSS Planter, in Charleston Harbor and selling it, sailing it from Confederate controlled waters to the United States blockade. His example and persuasion helped convince President Lincoln to accept 
black American soldiers in the United States Army and the United States Navy. See, now a lot of people just think it was Frederick Douglass mm -hmm. who talked to Abraham Lincoln and said, you are not using mm -hmm. this other source that you have, resource you have. <clears throat> so Robert Smalls was up in that game, too. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Some things. This was a, sometime they just put so many... Um, only certain people up in front of us as far as, you mm -hmm. know, history is concerned, mm -hmm. especially on TV, the media, that, you know, they just, Martin and stuff like that, and Martin is a good man, but it's a lot, a lot of stuff of that our people have done right. in this country Unsung. and in the world, mm -hmm. you know, so. Unsung mm -hmm. heroes. Yep, or just like him. He talked to President Lincoln to accept black American soldiers into the United States mm -hmm. Army and the United States Navy. Mm -hmm. Small was born in Beaufort, South Carolina. After the American Civil War, he returned there and became a politician, winning election as a Republican to the South Carolina State Legislature, Legislature and the United States House of Representatives during Reconstruction Era. Okay. As a politician, Smalls authored state legislation providing for South Carolina to have the first free and compulsory, compulsory, compulsory public school system in the United States. Mm. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. mm. He found the Republican Party of South Carolina. What? He founded the Republican Party of South Carolina due to the state's white Democrats disfranchising most blacks who made up much of the Republican Party. But that's a story we talked about before earlier on the program. Smalls was the, first, was the last Republican to re represent South Carolina's 5th Congressional District until 2010. What? We talked about that too. We talked about the, the, the I think it was the brother who got uh, since since mm -hmm. Robert Small. I can't think of his name, but we did a story on him. Okay. Okay. He, Robert Smalls was born in 1839 as a slave in a cabin behind his master's Henry McKee's house on 511 Prince Street in Beaufort, South Carolina. He grew up in the city under the influence of the Low County Gullah. Gullah culture of his mother Lindy, Lydia Polite, a slave of McKee's. His father's name was Robert. Small's master sent him to Charleston at the age of 12 to be hired out as a laborer with the money paid to his master. <laughs> that free labor was deep. The youth first Worked in a hotel, then became a lamplighter on Charleston streets. In his teen years, his love of the sea led him to find work on Charleston docks and wharves. Small was a stevedore, a dock worker, a rigger, a sail maker, and eventually worked his way up to become a wheelman, more or less pilot through slaves. Those slaves were not honored by that title. As a result, he was very knowledgeable about Charlotte's Harbor. At the age of 17, Smalls married Hannah Jones, an enslaved maid in Charleston on December 21st, 1856. She was five years his senior and already had two daughters. Their first own child, Elizabeth Lydia Small, was born on Feb in February 1858. And three years later, they had a son, Robert Jr., who died at two. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is his escape from slavery, and I'm just going to read a little bit about it. In April of 1861, because this is, this is the, the big main part about his story, of how he actually escaped mm -hmm. on this ship. <laughs> okay, you know it's just just something. Anyway, in April of 1861, the American Civil War began with the Battle of Fort Sumner in New in nearby Charlotte, Charleston Harbor. In the fall of 1861, Smalls was assigned to steer the CSS Planter, a lightly armed Confederate military transport, under the command of Charleston's District Commander Brigadier. General Roswell S. Ripley. Uh, let me go down a little further. 
Smalls and the planner's crew could see the line of federal blockade ships in the outer harbor, seven miles away. Smalls appeared content and had the confidence of the planner's crew and owners, and at the same time, in April of 1862, Smalls began to plan an escape. Mm. He discussed the matter with the other slaves in the crew, accepting ones who he did not accepting the ones who he did not trust. Mm -hmm. The day of May 12, 1862, the planner traveled 10 miles south of Charles Charleston to stop at Coles Island, a Confederate post on Stono River that was being dismantled. There she picked up four large guns to transport to Fort Charleston Harbor. Back in Charleston, the crew loaded 2,000 pounds of ammunition and 20 cords of firewood onto the planter. At the same point, family members, y'all are hearing this. I'm hoping y'all are hearing this mm -hmm. because it's, it's a story going and it's wrapping around mm -hmm. this. At the same point, family members hid aboard another steamer docked at the North Atlantic War. On the evening of May 12, Planter was docked, as usual, at the wharf below General Ripley's headquarters. His three white officers disembarked to spend the night ashore, leaving Smalls uh -huh. and the crew on board, as was their custom. Uh -huh. They always did it. We just trust them. They ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> the co Confederate officers were court-martialed and, and two were convicted, but the verdicts were later overturned. At 3 a.m., May 13, Smalls and seven of the eight slave crewmen made their previously planned escape to the Union blockade ships. Small put on the captain's uniform and wore a straw hat similar to the captain's. He sailed a planter past what was then called Southern Wharf and stopped at another wharf to pick up his wife and child and families <laughs> of the crewmen. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. Smalls guided the ship past the five Confederate harbor forts without incident as he gave the correct signal at checkpoints. Mm. The planner had been commanded by Captain Relay, and Smalls copied Relay's manners and straw, straw hat on deck to fool Confederate onlookers from shore <laughs> at the fort. The planner sailed past Fort Sumter at 4.30 a.m. He headed straight for the Union Navy fleet, flying a white bed sheet as a surrender flag. The planter had been seen by the USS Onward, which was about to fire until a crewman spotted the white flag because he was in a Confederate mm -hmm, ship. Mm -hmm. The Onward's captain, John Frederick Nichols, boarded the planter, and Smalls asked for a United States flag to display. He surrendered the planter and her cargo to the United States Navy. Wow. Smalls' escape plan succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, the am ammunition, you know, he had that 200, yeah. um, 200, let me see, two, where is it at? He had 200. Mm, it was loaded. It was loaded, yeah. Anyway, he, I'll find it in a minute. Okay. Uh, that I wanted to tell that story, but I want to also tell you about his political c career. Smalls was a loyal Republican, and on August 22, 1912, he wrote to United States Senator Newt Nelson, I never lose sight of the fact that it that had it not been for the Republican Party, I never would have been an office holder of any kind from 1862 to the present. Wow. So, you know, the Democrats was killing them. Yeah. Yeah. In words that became famous, he described his party as the party of Lincoln, which unshackled the necks of four million human beings. He wrote this line on September 12, 1912, in a letter expressing his anxiety over the looming presidential election. He concluded that letter, I ask that every colored man in the North who has a cast to vote would cast that vote for the regular Republican Party and thus bury <laughs> the Democratic Party so deep that they would not be be seen even a bubble coming from the spot 
where the burial, wow. where the burial place took place. Wow. <laughs> he said, bury them. All of them get out here and vote. <laughs> In 1874, Smalls was elected to the United States House of Representatives, where he served two terms from 1875 to 1879. From 1882 to 1883, he represented <coughs> South Carolina's 5th Congressional District. In the House, the state legislature gerrymandered, which they do. Mm -hmm. they, mm, they might try, to, try to do it. Mm -hmm. To change the district's boundaries, if y'all don't know what that means, including Buford and other heavily black, all right, <coughs> coastal areas in South Carolina's 7th district. They do that here in Flint. Mm -hmm. They have done it several times. And we know it's gerrymanding. Mm -hmm. Yep. And served from 1884 to 1887. He was a member of the 44th, 45th, and 47th through 49th United States Congresses. He also, his chief rival at that time was George D. Tillman, who was a rival of his in the congressional races. Mm. <coughs> Lord. Smalls died, I mean, sorry, joined his ancestors of malaria and diabetes in 1915 at the age of 75. He was buried in his family's plot in the churchyard of Tabernacle Baptist Church in downtown Buford. The monument to Small in this churchyard is inscribed with a statement he made to the South Carolina legislature. <coughs> Something getting caught in my throat. Mm -hmm. In 1895, my race needs no special defense for the past history of them in this country proves them to be the equal of any people anywhere. All they need is an equal chance in this battle of life. Amen. That's our story about Robert Smalls. If you want more information about him, you can go on to Wikipedia, <laughs> type in his name, and you can find more information about Robert Smalls. Amen. And then uh, another quote, did you know if you break the rules, you make history? That's the only way you're going to make history, when you break the rules. <laughs> That's something. All right, Miss B, pass it on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's our story. <laughs> that's our story. That was a wonderful story, too. Yeah, that that's a, a story one. because yeah. there's, one, there's some things in here that he escaped. He was a slave. Mm -hmm. He escaped his, uh, a slave, his family, and brought other people with him. Mm -hmm. He did it on a Confederate ship. He also was one of the people that talked to President Lincoln about using this other, his mm -hmm. other resources. Mm -hmm. You know, so. And fooled the other Navy. Yep. Yeah. And, and and then the Navy he came to the Union, mm -hmm. and the Union let him come on in. Uh, yeah, with that supplies and, <laughs> and all that supplies, and I think they had like two hundred. I know they had two hundred uh, pieces of ammunition. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, two hundred pounds of ammunition and twenty cords of firewood. So two hundred pounds of ammunition is a lot. That's a lot. Amen. All right. All right then. And that's our story. Uh, how World War II opened the door for one of the first black women in NASA. Um, this is really something. I thought this was a very important piece <coughs> to uh, me. bring to the audience today. And have you ever seen a computer in a skirt? <laughs> Duchess Harris has. Uh, in the photo, you showing the photo, John? Show them the first one. Cause it's, a, it's a photo that um, uh, has her with several different women that were all part of this. Miriam Mann. Okay. Yeah. With the X on it. In the That's photo okay. submitted to Historically Black, uh, a project by the Washington Post, Miriam Daniel Mann walks with purpose down to the Hampton, Virginia Street in 1943 clutching a thick hardcover book. She sports heels, a fashionable turban, and a coat with two large buttons, the hemline of her plaid skirt peering out underneath. 
<clears throat> Man, Harris's grandmother was one of the first black female computers employed by NASA's predecessor, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. Now to Harris, uh, the photo of her grandmother represents a level of socioeconomic opportunity, opportunity not often available to black women in the 1940s. Man's professional attire was dramatically different from the uniform of the majority of black women wore to domestic jobs at that time. Because you know <coughs> black women was not in NASA at that time. Everybody was ironing, Black washing, women were not in anything. Anything. For a black woman to have that level of education and professional respect then was certainly something to be proud of, Harris said. She looks upper class, middle class, that she added. Human computers were responsible for calculating math, arithmetic, calculus, differential equations, trigonometry, analytic geometry, you name it, for engineers with not much but a pencil and slide rule in their hands. Computing and always... You all right? Yeah. Drink you some water. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Computers, computing had always been grunt work left to women, white women. White female computers had been working at Langley Research Center since 1935, but in 1943, the uh, National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics began recruiting black female mathematicians for human computer positions to cope with the labor shortage as the consequences of World War II. Uh, the word uh, for the job opportunity at Langley reached man across the town at Hampton University where she lived with her husband Bill who was a professor there. Mann was a graduate of Talladegian College with a major in chemistry and a minor in mathematics applied for the job. As part of the application process, black female applicants were required to complete a 10-week course at Hampton University, <coughs> then the Hampton Institute. Mann was one of the 11 women one of the first cohorts upon completion of the course. She qualified for the human computer job which paid, get a load of this, $2,000 a year. That was wow. big money. Well, no. Back then? No. Well, a little more than the $25,000 salary for 2016. Oh. She took the job. Okay. When Harris shared her grandmother's story with others, few believed her, a black woman working for NASA more than 20 years before the Civil Rights Act. It was the doubt of the others that motivated Harris to write a book about the incredible feats of her grandmother and the other black female computers. While doing research for that book, Harris' mother gave her the photo of man walking to her job in Langley. This was a great opportunity for very, very small percentage of black people, Harris said. This time period is also referred to as a time when computers wore skirts. Skirts. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Amen. And I, John, if you could show that picture again with all the women on there, mm -hmm. that is all of the black mm -hmm. women there were who were paving the way for women engineers. Because mm -hmm. these women were considered engineers. Amen. And Miriam Mann is the one who has the X on the right hand side. Amen. Uh, this time, oh yeah, uh, a, a line oft employed by Katherine Johnson, a black female mathematician hired by the NACA in 1953 and one of Mann's college's co colleagues at Langley. And by the time the NACA became NASA in 1958, there were black female computers employed, according to the agency. All right, come the early 1960s, 
Mann, Johnson, and the rest of the NASA black female computers were playing an instrument yet hidden role in the space race. The untold true story of NASA's black female computers is in an inspired book called Hidden Figures. Uh, this book is the basis for the movie, which we were talking about, bearing the same name starring Taraji P. Henson. But and they changed it to Hidden Human Computers. That's mm -hmm. the name of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. With Taraji P. Henson, Octavia Spencer, and Janelle Monet coming to the theaters in January 2017. Oh, sure. <laughs> All right. That's what it said. Okay, Johnson, the central character of the book and film, was plucked from the segregated pool of black female computers and assigned to an all-white male flight research team. John Glenn personally requested that Johnson hand verify all the trajectory calculations rendered by NASA's fancy new electronic computers for his 1962 mission to orbit Earth. Mann also worked on computations for John Glenn's flight ship that would circle the planet three times in four hours and 56 minutes. Can you imagine somebody calculating that? Mm -hmm. Not, a, I mean, this, they're not computers, <coughs> they're, they're human computers. A year after John Glenn's flight, Mann completed 20 years service with NASA and Harris has the letter congratulating Mann for her service. And that's the story of Miriam Mann, a I human computer some, in a skirt. I got some more little stuff. Okay. That she had said that her, um, one of Harris's favorite uh, stories to tell is her grandmother's reaction to the colored computers oh. sign that hung in NASA's dining room. Oh. <laughs> she said, and it's from a Smithsonian magazine. One particular brazen computer, Maria Mann took responding to the affront as her own personal vendetta. She plucked the sign from the table, tucking it away in her purse. She took it down. Mm -hmm. When the sign returned, she removed it again. That was incredible courage, says Shutterly. This was still a time when people are, are being lynched, mm. when you could be pulled off the bus for sitting in the wrong seat. There were very, very high stakes, but eventually, man won, the sign disappeared. Amen. That was a nice story about that. I ordered the book, I can't <clears throat> wait to get it. Uh, Miriam Daniel Mann was born in Covington, Georgia on July 25, 1907. She joined her ancestors in 1967. And there is a book called H Hidden Human Computers, The Black Women of NASA mm -hmm. uh, by Duchess Harris, which is her granddaughter mm -hmm. who wrote it, preserving this history. Uh, she said, we tried to, as we all do, we all work together to repair the history that was erased. Mm -hmm. But some of America's history is impossible to erase because of some people like you and I. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I also wanted to mention that there's a book called Black Lives Matter. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> and it's for children. And it's by Sue Bradford Harris. And then it's another book. Black Lives Matter, but it said the name of it is by a man. I didn't get that. Let me leave that alone because I don't have the name of the person. You said Sue Harris. <clears throat> yep, Sue Harris. Sue Bradford Harris. She also wrote the book with uh, Duchess Harris. I, I believe they related somewhere mm -hmm. in there, but I don't know. But she wrote a book called Black Lives Matter, and then it's one, it's, it's one out there. Somebody is outside. Mm. And that's by a man, but I didn't get that, and I shouldn't be even saying anything. I don't have the whole. Emperor. But you can look up the, the You can author. look it up. Yeah. Yep. Somebody's out there, you know, and they see it's it's a story. It's a nice story, and it's something to give uh, to let your children understand what Black Lives Matters mm -hmm. really means. Now, 
Did anyone go to the Museum of African American History oh, wow. and Cultural Center this past Saturday? Oh wow! I they say a they, lot of people did. Yeah, they say they've been doing events all along, but this was the opening. Mm -hmm. And that you know, from what I see on television, is wow, beautiful, state of the art. I know, Miss Deloney. <clears throat> I'm going in May. Praise the Lord. Well, yeah, let me I, know. Got, I might go with you. I got a cousin that's graduating from Howard University. Oh. So we're going to be over that way and we're okay. just going to go deal with it all. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. I got to got go to, go to go see, see this it. museum. This is a museum that's been in the making for hundreds of years. Really for hundreds of years. And I, I got a story on it, but I don't have it with me because I wasn't going to talk about this. But... I hope that anyone that can go, go. Go. And I don't mean just black people. I mean all ethnic Everybody. groups so that y'all can understand a little bit more Amen. about the culture in this country, about us, and about yourselves. Amen. Because black history is American history. Amen. Period. Okay. All right. All right. Don't forget the book called Human Hidden Human Computers, The Black Women of NASA mm -hmm. by Duchess Harris. And the book called Black Lives Matter by Sue Bradford mm -hmm. Harris. And okay. you can also look up hum uh, computers in a skirt. <laughs> now, now, I think that's so cute. They should have named yeah. that book. They should have named it that, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's our story about Miriam Daniel Mann. A hidden computer or mm -hmm. in a skirt. In a skirt. <laughs> and Mr. And, uh, Mr. Robert Small, who made our made uh, who was uh, uh, an escaped, I mean enslaved black man who escaped and became a great politician, and he did it on a uh, Confederate boat. And he brought his family out of slavery, and he brought other the crewmen Amen. and their family out of slavery. All right. So Taurus Black History Corner Internet Program comes to you via satellite at allpointstv.com. You can watch our program every second and fourth Monday of the month at 3.30 p.m. Also be sure to watch what's going on with political pundit Dr. George Moss every Monday at 2 p.m. And something new, allpointstv.com programs will be shown on Comcast, Channel 17, every Tuesday from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. And to receive our theme song, Be Proud to Be Black, contact TP Productions at 810-962-3258. You know Kawanza is coming up. Black History Month is coming up. Martin Luther King's mm -hmm. birthday is coming up. This would be an awesome song to have in your household to be planning around, you know. Be proud to be black. All right. That's 810-962-3258. On our next program, we will tell our story about the protests of Colin, Colin. Copernick. Copernick. Copernick, ain't it? Copernick. Copernick. And... <clears throat> Miss B, I'm not sure what her story is going to be about, but this is what I'm going to talk about because he's getting more and more and more mm -hmm. support. Uh, and Charlotte, North Carolina, where my son is, mm -hmm. is on fire. Well, we can talk about the real, the original song of the Star Spangled Banner to go along with that. Yep, you can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. As always, I'd like to say thanks to all of you who have watched our program today. And we definitely hope that you have been lift, uplifted in knowing we have a great story about our people and that you are encouraged to go and learn more about Amen. our story. Until next time, as we like to always say, know that as a people we are strong and resilient and that no one can keep us down. Also be proud to be black and always keep on keeping on with us. Hotep, which means peace. peace. <laughs>
cause they ain't giving it to us. Put your all in. If you truly wanna make it, have me waiting for handouts, baby, you gotta take it. Like Martin gonna have a dream, cause he had one. Like Malcolm, by any means, gotta get that done. Don't be ashamed of who you are, stick your chest out proud. Make them believe that you're the best, show them what you about. We gotta love each other, stop killing each other. We gotta unitize, and don't believe the lies. This is a message to the blacks and any other minority. Live well and love self, that's the priority. Been fought for so many centuries that they are nobody is not easy. So they very skillfully uh, made you and me hate our African identity. And the English language will be reconstructed so that teachers will not be forced to teach the Negro child six new ways to despise himself and thereby perpetuate his false sense of inferiority. And our people and our skin and our blood while we have to end up eating ourselves. Made us feel inferior. We must no longer.